I just, oh, it's, it's just so genius. Like, it's just so good. Excuse me. I'm a genius. Look. Hi friends, I hope you're well. Now, this is a very exciting, but also incredibly nervous reading vlog. <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. I think a lot of you know that I am running a read along for the Winter Night Trilogy in November, December and January with Riley, Nicole and Aaron. And I'm gonna read the first one now. <laughs> I'm terrified. So this reading vlog is for The Baron and the Nightingale by Carrotin Arden. I thought since I was running the read along, it may make sense to do a reading vlog for each of the books. So I know this isn't something that everyone's gonna wanna watch, but you should. Because it's the best series of all time. Like it's literally the best fantasy series of all time. I don't make the rules. It's the truth. So this is one of my favorite fantasy series ever. I read it before I had my booktube channel and we follow Vasya as she lives in Northern Russia in the woods and it's all about old magic and fairy tales and house spirits and dark religion and family relationships. And it's just brilliant. It's the most magical fairy tale like story ever. It's been a year and a half. I think I forgot until I saw a lot of people's reactions to it in the Goodreads group that we have. Just kind of how like small this first story is, how very much contained it is. And the other books kind of break out of that a bit. But I'm still so excited to be back with Vasya and her family in Northern Russia. But I'm terrified because what if I don't like it as much? That is a big concern. I, I'm not good at rereading my favorite books. Like I'm really not good at it because what if I don't like it? I want to love it as much as I always have. This copy is very battered by the way because I've lent it out to so many people. Like I think maybe six different people have read this copy. Okay, we're gonna read it. Pray for me. The intensity, the, the prayers going up, you know? And I just felt like this is the moment. I'm gonna go start it and I will check back in with you once I have read a bit of it. I've just hit page 55, so I've literally just read the start. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. The album's amazing, song to song. I always said it reads like a fairy tale. Like it's this just this magical old Russian fairy tale. And that's what it is, like coming back into it. It's just so magical. I forgot how brilliant it was to follow Vasya from literally before she is born. And in those 50 pages, she's already about seven. And by the end of this series, Vasya is like a woman. And I just forgot how brilliant it is to follow her from her beginning to the climax of the last book. Also, there's so many more meanings to stuff now that I've read the whole series. I mean, obviously Catherine Harden hadn't written like the last book. Maybe Maybe even the second book when this came out but you see where certain storylines are gonna go and it just rather than it feeling like oh that's boring or oh, I know where this is going like there's so much more enjoyment and added layers through having read it oh god I love Vasya Vasya is such an icon like she's a legend she's, she's an, an icon, icon she's a legend and she is the moment, moment. Now come on now. One thing I'm realizing reading this now again and having read a lot more in the space <laughs> since I read this last, I read this last about a year and a half ago. And in that time, I've probably read like, 150 books, which was more than I had read in like the 10 years previous, right? In my reading since I first read this, I've run into a lot of books where I felt like characters were just caricatures or archetypes, right? Not having a lot of depth to them, just being this one singular characteristic. However, I always believe that archetypes can be done well. Archetypes are done brilliantly in this book. Catherine Arden just being amazing at everything she does. Well, I can't make the music not bop. I can't make the music not bop. I don't know what y'all want me to do. The family members, so each of Vasya's brothers and sisters and her dad and the nurse, Danya, all have a role to play. They all have a specific archetype to play. You have the devout religious one, you have the motherly one, you have the kind of strong, bold one, you have the playful one. They all have these distinct characteristics that they don't stray from too much in the story because ultimately it is Vasya his story and they are just to, they're meant to explore different aspects of old Russian society and different aspects of the plot. Her family are some of my favourite characters in the series because they are done so well in this simplistic way. So I think 
if an author wants their characters to kind of be archetypal, to have these key characteristics they don't stray from too much, this is a great example of that. I feel like it is simplistic in a really brilliant way. I, as much as I love like overcomplicated books full of different, you know, full of a really dense plot and a, you know, really complex world building. I also love simple books. And I've spoken about this before, how I love simple murder mysteries. And this is one of the only fantasy books that I've read. The other two aren't as simple, I would say, but this one is. And I think it's just done so well. I think there's a lot to be said for when a book is simple and it's perfect right? That's hard. That is hard to not have so much going on. It's hard to be really stripped back and still be perfect. I'll check in with you when I finish part one, which is about 120 page. Yeah, about page 120. So I'll read like another 60 pages and then I'll check in with you. Finish part one. Vasya, for those of you that don't know and haven't read this, Vasya isn't actually in this first section that much. There's a lot of her dad and her brothers going to Moscow for like political reasons, trying to find wives, trying to like establish themselves within the connections they have within like those in power essentially, like with the Grand Prince and stuff like that. So Vasya isn't in it much. The first section is definitely setting up the past for all of our other characters other than Vasya and how they affect her. But I just love it. You already know. It's actually amazing to be back with these characters. It's such like a just cozy, wonderful story for this time of year. Part two is actually really big. Part two is like 200 pages. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read 100 pages and check in with you, then read the other 100 pages to the end of part two. I've got a lot of uni work to do today, but I'm hoping to just get it done quite fast and take breaks with this. So like take 20 minute breaks here and there. That's the plan. How well it goes is... <laughs> I always cut myself out at the end, like saying, oh, I'm gonna go read now, because I never do it. Like I never fulfill the hopes and dreams that I have. I never read as much as I want to, as much as I say I want to in these clips. So like I never include it in my videos. Clap if you care. <laughs> clap, if you, clap if you care. I can at the very least read 100 pages. If not, I really wanna get to the end of part two. And then tomorrow I only have the end to read. So I think we can do it. Okay. Let's go make food. reached page 222 and like guys I don't think I can like I don't think I can put into words how brilliant this book is how amazing it is 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 yep 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she ate that up and it is a bit difficult to talk about because I forgot just how much of like a quiet, slow book this first book is. I said this before when I've spoken about this series is that the series does such a good job of having like a really marked expansion of the world between each book. So the world really expands in these different ways in each book, but it feels very natural. The end of the last book sets itself up perfectly for the world to become bigger in the next book. But it feels natural, but you can feel, oh my gosh, we have just opened this up in such new and exciting ways each time. So having read the last book, when I come back to this book, I'm like, oh my God, it's so small and simple and quaint. The stakes are so much lower. It's very strange coming back to this book and seeing how much of a difference occurs within the series. But I do love it. So Something I love, right? I love fantasy that is connected to nature, is like woodish in some ways. Like I love settings in the woods with magic. Like there's just not enough of it. There's just not enough of it. 
What's the solution to that then? This one is interesting because you do have the you have the house spirits, you have the forest spirits that Vasya is desperately trying to keep alive and to keep the memory of alive. The nature is connected to them, but the nature and the setting, you know, that these people are so dependent on the nature around them. It just has repercussions and mirrors the story at every turn. Like we are constantly getting descriptions of the weather or the setting. It mirrors and it affects everything that happens in the story. I just, oh, it's, it's just so genius. Like it's just so good. Excuse me, I'm a genius. Look, I am realizing just how brilliant Catherine Arden is. She planned this. Like she might say that she didn't, but like, there's so much I'm noticing now, reading it again. Like, there's so much I didn't pick up on. There's so many character relationships, like, for example, Father Constantine, who is the priest who is kind of forced for political reasons to come and be the priest where in Vasya's community. And he's really trying to, like, rid the community of those old spirits that Vasya is then trying to keep alive. And their relationship is a very interesting one. And I don't think I picked up on all the nuances of it when I first read this. I'm gonna finish it today. I've got about 180 pages left. I love it so much. The guys, it's so brilliant. I hope you're all enjoying it. I just finished part two of The Baron Nightingale. I have just remembered like how much this book comes into its own in part three. Part three is just so good and everything starts to come together and everything starts to move the story along. Secondly, Forgot how brilliant it was that the horses can speak. The horses speak. <laughs> Don't be closed minded because you will not get anywhere in life. Right. Vasya can speak with the horses and just her relationship with them and like understanding of the horses. Never thought I would say I love, but I love. In just the kind of the past 50 pages, I downloaded the audiobook because someone messaged me about it. <laughs> And I just realized like, oh, why didn't I give that a go? I wanted to give it a go. Here's the thing, I don't love the audiobook. Like I don't know if I had listened, if I'd read it first time via audiobook, if I would have fallen as in love with it as I did reading it normally. But rereading it and reading along with the book via audiobook for the second time, it feels like someone is reading me like one of my favorite childhood stories because it's written like this fairy tale. And it's there's something really magical about hearing someone recount that to you. So. I really like the audiobook. I'm really loving it, but I don't know. Because it's not my first time reading the book, I don't know if I can recommend you reading it that way. I literally cannot emphasize to you enough how many lines are now gaining meaning now that I've read the whole series. Like, I love it when a series does this because you find out new things. There's so many hidden meanings and so many lines of things that don't make sense until the last book, like the end of the last book, and now makes sense to me reading it back through, and I just love it. Like, it's just so good. Catherine Arden is one of the best writers I've ever read. The way that this is written, the prose, the lyricalness to it, the fairy tale-ness to it, is just so magical. Me after every Every single line in the book. That was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. Vasya is probably one of my favorite book characters of all time. So I'm gonna go finish this off tonight and then I will check back in with you in the morning. I've only got about 70 pages left. I finished it and it's still five stars. Of course it is. It's still one of my favorite books. <laughs> this is actually probably my least favorite in the trilogy just because of how much the series grows as it goes on. The second one is definitely my favorite and the third one is my second favorite, but this is still a five star, still one of the best fantasy books that I have read. Part three, the last part of this book really starts to bring in higher magic that we haven't experienced yet throughout it and it's just done so masterfully. I love it. I love it. This book is feminist as hell. Like, Vasya is constantly having to fight against what is expected of women at this time, what is expected of her, like what people think she can do and how she's trying to prove to them that she can do so much more. She'll save people's lives and then people will be angry at her that she's done that because she acted in a way that a woman shouldn't act, but that, that person would be dead if it wasn't for her. We also have a lot of morally gray characters in this, if that's something you enjoy. There's a lot of characters, particularly whose backstories were built up in that first part, that I told you about where Vasya isn't in it too much, who we know what they've come from, we know what they've gone through, and they act in ways that we hate. 
right? They act in ways that we despise them for, but we know what they've been through, and so you can't fully hate them. There's villains in this, but there's almost not any real villain. And I think that every villain or dark character or character who commits bad things is like that. And I really enjoy when a book isn't just like, oh, they're a bad person, you know, that, and that's all it is. I really like books that really take a deep dive into why people may be like that. I just love how contained and small and perfect in its simplicity this book is and the world expands. I'm so excited to read The Girl in the Tower next month. This is my favorite in the series. The way that this brings in like political intrigue and betrayal is just amazing. But the atmosphere of this was impeccable. Like everything of it was impeccable. Like I don't really have anything bad to say. Like if you were hoping for a nuanced vlog or any nuanced vlogs in this, like it's not gonna go well. <laughs> Be a I can't, save. I can't, I've tried it and I've failed. Why does everyone I expect can't. it then? <laughs> because I'm just gonna be talking about how much I love it all the time. I'm really intrigued to see what my co-hosts think of this book when they read it. I don't think any of them have read it yet. I think they're all gonna be starting it soon and I'm really scared but really intrigued because I think in the live show they might come up with some things that I wouldn't have come up with. Make sure you join us for the live show if you're reading this. There's still plenty of time. You've still got basically half the month to read this and it reads so fast. I'll leave all the links down below for the Goodreads group where we discuss it part by part, Twitter, and our live show will be either right at the beginning of December or maybe at the end of November. I'll let you know on the Twitter and the Goodreads group. We're just working out days that we can all do. Oh my god, it was so much fun to reread this and maybe this will make me reread favourites more often. I've got to ask a favour of you for a different video and you'll probably like clock what I'm doing straight away, but I had this thought last night and I often like think of a video idea and then don't do it for three months so I'm actually trying to seize on this. Let me know in the comments if you've ever read a book character that reminds you of me or that you like read, read before and you think I have the same energy as. I want to know any book characters I'm similar to like personality wise. Okay, comment that down below if you know any. <laughs> if you're joining us for the read along, thank you so much and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!